Your bully son may say with us and you kill our dog? Prepare for dad. I posted this on a slash pro revenge but was referred to this sub instead after I posted a rage comic on a slash memes. This happened in 1995 on a small rural town in Chaco province, Argentina. Everyone knows each other here until this very day. My father was an electrician, the only one in town, so he was constantly meeting people and as he was born and raised here, he was very well known by everyone. He grew up with many of the police officers from back then and they even had a sados together, Argentinian barbecue, at least three times a month for years. My father was not a violent man. That was the only time I saw him do something like that. The other man with his busy son, they were not from town. They had moved here a year or so prior, they were from Buenos Aires. I don't really knew the guy, only his kid who was an absolute asshole to almost every kid in the block and he constantly picked on me and my brother since we were the youngest of our neighborhood, therefore couldn't defend ourselves. Bucky wasn't trained since we knew nothing about training, but he was loyal and playful with every kid. One thing for sure, though, he was protective. One afternoon we were playing in the park and out came Bully Kid, who at first threw rocks at us, then got closer and started calling us names and us being little got scared. He was bigger than us. We tried to leave but he blocked us and started hitting my brother, I tried to stop him but he did the same to me. Bucky heard us crying and came running, jumping and getting the bully's arm at once. He bit, shook and released, staying between us and the bully barking like mad until the kid left running. We saw Hai get inside his house and a few seconds later came father with the sledgehammer. Bucky stood in front of us, hairs raised and barking but the man didn't stop. He got close, raised the sledgehammer and went straight down to Bucky's head. He did not him once, he hit him five times. The first blow I'll never forget. The sound of the steel connecting with the skull, the painful whimper of our dog. Bucky got knocked with the first blow. By the fifth and final his head was caved in. My brother and I were frozen in place, scared to death, crying a lot. The asshole dad say something which I don't remember now, and left. We were unable to move for a moment, such was our fear. Finally I grabbed my brother and went home. Dad was fixing a fan and hen he saw us asked us what happened. We told him and just said right. Okay, let's wash your faces and grab some ice cream. Yes. That's what our dad did. Took us for ice cream. He did a pretty well job to mask his emotions and showed himself cheerful to us. That night, when brother was asleep and I was playing in the kitchen, he grabbed the wrench, told mom and I he had to fix something in the neighbor, I assumed it was another neighbor since it was a common thing for my dad to get asked by neighbors to fix things, nodded to mom, mom nodded back, yes, she knew, and left. He came back some minutes later, told me to go to bed and there was it. A decade later we came to know what happened. He went to the guy's house, knocked on the door and punched the dude so hard it rocked his head back. Told him he would break one limb for each of his children whom he made cry, I can only imagine what he would have done if we were more than two kids, proceeded to beat the guy some more in front of his family and then took the wrench and broke his legs. He then left the house, went home, asked me to go to bed, talked to mom and went straight to the police, turned himself in and was actually delayed until the police went and checked with the other guy. My dad also showed our dead dog to them and the police found the sledgehammer on the bully's house still with blood on it and they let my father go. They also spoke with the dude when he got better and suggested him to leave the town since if they weren't liked before, they wouldn't ever be now. To this, you gotta understand the mindset from some small rural towns. We looked at outsiders with mistrust back then and it took a while for people to get used to you if you were new in town. However these people came and weren't very much liked. Apparently because of the kid and the father was also an asshole. I do not condone the actions of my father, nor am I justifying in any way the events that transpired then, but as a father myself I can totally understand to what extent can a man react when their kids are at play. I loved my dad and I have mad respect for him. R.I.P. Dad, we miss you greatly. So there, that's the full story. Sorry for my bad English, it is not my native language. Thanks guys. Make a developmentally disabled boy cry, lose your family my former boss is the worst human being I've ever met. He did all sorts of things to mess with anyone he didn't like. So a while ago I was at a family event in a local park, walking with a young boy from our family who is developmentally disabled with Down syndrome, Ben. Ben does fairly well all things considered, but he's always been sensitive to anyone making fun of the way he looks or his condition. We are just having a good time on our little stroll, Ben and I both enjoying the day. Along comes my boss walking toward us. I'll call him Rob. I cringe at seeing him but smile and say hello to play nice. Rob, there's something you don't see every day. A pair of ugly retards walking together. 
Ben bursts into tears as Rob laughs and walks off. I deal with Ben and ignore Rob. I'm super pissed and trying to calm Ben down because for a few minutes he was totally distraught. Finally I get Ben to focus on how he has me and a lot of other awesome friends and family and that Rob is a stranger and what he thinks doesn't matter. We walk some more and I saw that Rob was at the park with his wife and teen daughter having a cookout and he had apparently been on his way back to his family from a trip to the toilet when he saw us. Back to being super pissed. I went back to our gathering and talked to an adult cousin of mine, Jake, telling him what happened. Jake wanted to get revenge on Rob, but I reminded him that this was my boss. I didn't want Rob to be able to know the revenge had anything to do with me because then he'd make my work life even worse than he already had. So Jake asked me for anything I knew about Rob that might help. I told Jake a bunch of things about Rob, but the relevant info here is that Rob liked to drink a particular kind of locally made beer at a certain bar. Rob had talked of having drank there on the previous Friday night while his wife and daughter were away visiting her family. Also, Rob had recently told a story at work about his wife's obsession with a particular little green fictional character. Let's call it Yabby Boda. Turns out his wife kept a stuffed Yabby Boda on their bed at all times. I wasn't there for the revenge setup itself because I didn't want Rob to see me, but Jake filled in the details afterward. It was basically this. Jake approached Rob and put an arm around his shoulders and tried to kiss him. Rob pushes him off. Rob, what are you doing? Rob's family is now paying attention. Jake, I am just so excited to see you, sweetie. Friday night was so amazing. Rob, what are you talking about? Jake, seriously, you're going to act like you don't remember now? I know you were a bit tipsy after all of those, specific local beers, at the, local bar, but certainly you remember what happened later. Rob, nothing happened later. Or ever. I don't even know your name. Jake, really? You were screaming it on Friday. Rob, turning red, you lying son of a. Rob's wife, interrupting, listen, I don't know who you are, but this is my husband. I'm sure you have him mistaken for someone else. Please just leave us alone. Jake, oh no, I'm not mistaken. We had the best sex ever on Friday night and now he's acting like he doesn't even know me. Rob's wife, I told you, this is my husband. You're mistaken. Jake, oh maybe I am. I guess it was someone else who took me back to his place on, Rob Street, and had great sex with me on the bed right next to Yabby Boda. Sorry. Jake turns and walks away. Rob's wife, oh my god, Rob, WTF is wrong with you. You're gay now? Really? Already long story made a bit shorter, Rob's wife wasn't real happy with him anyway and this was apparently the tipping point that made her file for divorce soon thereafter. Rob frequently complained at work in the following months about how he didn't care about his wife but really missed his daughter and how much it sucked to live in his new place compared to his old home. Every time he complained about his lack of a home life at work, I knew he did it to himself when he was mean to a developmentally disabled kid. The best part is he never figured out I was involved at all. Be abusive to employees, say bye-bye to your job. My former boss was, simply put, an absolute fucking asshole. He was the type of person that had the ability to be so condescending while acting as if he was doing you a favor. His condescending attitude was sometimes downright abusive and he seemed to have a particular problem with all of the female employees, he acted as if they were dumb and needed assistance with every step. He loves to scream at people regardless of how little their mistake was if there even was one. He was a slave driver and expected everyone to sacrifice their own personal lives for their job. The thing that sparked this revenge was him telling me to miss my older sister's birthday to come into work on a day that I already booked off. No one liked him. Me and all of my colleagues in the department, around 10 or so, couldn't stand him being here anymore. So we did the protocol, all of us piled together the evidence we had of him not sticking to booked off holiday schedules, having inappropriate and sometimes abusive language and we brought it all on one Google Doc. This was step one. Step two was getting a cherry on top, we did this by getting him to do one of his screaming tantrums at one of us. We wanted this to be as damning as possible and the youngest and smallest girl out of all of us volunteered to be the bait. She made an intentional beginner's mistake in her paperwork, something bound to get her roared at. And the idiot took the bait. You see he likes to do his scoldings in front of all of us to prove a point or rule by fear as he called it. This gave us the perfect opportunity to film it from behind our desks and add eye to the Google Doc. Now you see, in our company there's this really not well-made email system. You can send an email to an entire department, and I mean entire, as long as you have its name and manager's name. 
But the thing about this was the fact that all of this information was completely and freely given to employees, this means that a person could send whatever email they want to the entire company including the CEO. So one morning at 10 a.m. to ensure that as many people would be working as possible, we made a burner email and sent the Google Doc through an email to everyone in the company, it took a little while as there were many departments to get through but we got there in the end. We gave the email the subject, boss's name, vital information, branch name, department name. Of course our boss received the email as well and you could basically hear the clutter from his office, as people all over the company were contacting him to ask him what the hell this was about. HR did a light investigation into him and took heavy disciplinary action, as far as I know he wasn't directly fired but instead he resigned. And a month after that we never saw him again and he was replaced by a new guy who was also an asshole but just less of one. His expressions during the whole ordeal helped me sleep at night. Hey. I love you. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Reddit audio story, it would mean a lot to me if you could like and subscribe, or better yet, leave a comment about one of the stories. Thanks and I hope you have a wonderfully fantastic day. XOXO.